Hi, this is the second in a series of videos on the DX Commander Expedition. If you haven't seen the first video, it's all around the build and the parts uh, that make up the antenna. Uh, in this video, it's the tuning and the testing and just finishing off the build. Hope you find it useful. So here we have the three elements fitted, 40, 20 and 17. Going up past the first spreader, which will hold the guys. And the pole. And this is coming to the top of 17. Just temporary fitted with the fold back. And then here's 20 with the fold back. Again, temporary knots. And over here is a useful tip from Callum on the 40. Tie little loop that does fit through that eye in the bottom spreader. And this just keeps 40 tension before it makes its way top moving along that's the end of the current fold back before tuning a bit of plastic tube just to keep it nice and tight and a little bit of tube on the end to, uh, to fasten it off so that's the expedition already set up uh, now to put it on its base uh, with the radials and see how it performs. Right, so we're ready to test. You can see the radials are laid out. Uh, handy tip, the ends of the radials are about 110 centimetres apart because you lay them out and then find out you've got a gap and then you have to go around again. And you can see here we've got the coax attached which is a, a free radial and that goes back to the top of the garden. That's 17 metres of coax just representing what I'll be using out portable in the field. So now for the analyzer. So here we are with the club's antenna analyzer. You can use your SWR meter to check for tuning, um, but if you've got a, a, a reading right across the band that's steady, uh, then you're not quite sure if your radiating element is too long or too short. Uh, you have to do a little bit of fold back testing to see which end of the band it's coming in on. Uh, but uh, having an analyzer makes it a lot more simpler. So if we find 40 meters, and if you look on this meter for a dip, so dip there at about 7.1, rising to 1.3 at the top of the band. So that's perfectly fine. Uh, now, if I go to 17 meters, which just happens to be where that's sending the reading so there that's a bit low uh, 18.05 um, so the elements long I need to shorten that one and if we go down to 20 meters here comes the dip so 14.259 rising down the bottom of the band rising at the top of the band so I would say that one's bang on so just need to uh, if I go back to 40 meters should maybe shorten 40 uh, 17 just a, a little bit more fold back a couple of centimeters and we'll see how we get on and I'm glad I watched that video back. Uh, I was quite happy with 40 actually, uh, it was 17.1. So here we are with um, 17 adjusted again. And you only need to adjust it a couple of centimetres at these high frequencies, it doesn't take much. So if we're looking across here. So there's the dip. I'm quite happy with that, 18.13. Just check 14, still okay. Yep, that's fine. Uh, and 7 megs, 40 meters. And there's a the dip. Yeah, that's fine, 17.1. Now, 40 also resonates up on 15. So if we go beyond 
17 up into 21 and there's another dip at 21.3 so it's right in the middle of the phone section of the band and if you're a CW operator you can tweak these uh, radiating elements to uh, hit the part of the band that you're after or you can just go for the middle of the band uh, whatever takes your fancy so I'm quite happy with that now and that's time to uh, to fix the elements in position so you can see here I've got a carabine on the end of the paracord knotted up the same way as before and that attaches to the radiating element and here keeping one bit of tape on I've slid a little bit of shrink wrap on which will now heat up and that will uh, stick to the wire there we go that's stuck and now we'll take this bit of tape off and put just another piece of shrink wrap on there as well so there's the 17 element all neat carabiner shrink wrap all in place and now it's just a case of basically tidying up the knots at the shock cord end and all's done on 17 and if you want you can melt the ends of the shock cord and the paracord just to stop it unraveling So that's the DX Commander Expedition disassembled, 2.7 kilos, uh, 6 pounds that weighs and I think if you take the end plates off you'll get it back into the original box uh, but basically there we've got the radials, the radiating elements, the spreaders, the two little bits of tubing and the top spreader has the uh, shock cord on. Um, very simple to disassemble. I would use tape on the joints in assembling it. It takes a little bit of extra time, but uh, I just think it has a little bit of security to the pole. Um, so that's it. The uh, DX Commander disassembled, ready for packing away.